today I have Jeffrey Yarbrough. We're going to be discussing defending yourself from online predators. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Tanya. I'm happy to be here. What an exciting topic, defending yourself from online predators, text messages, email, debit card, and account fraud. Yep. I actually had some of that happen just recently, as well as a friend and a sister. Have you ever had that happen to you, Jeffrey? I have. Uh, ho thankfully, not an extreme amount, but I have. But I actually just had a friend texted a couple of days ago, and they had their account hacked. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's so frequent in today's time. Um, I typed up an email just not too long ago. Well, I say it's an email. It was a it could have been an email. It was so long. And then I, I got rid of it. But it was a Facebook post. I was going to do an educational Facebook post yeah. that had a copy of an email that I received just to educate people on the various different things to look out for. I believe it was from Best Buy, but showing um, things that predators do when they send out a fraudulent email. But let's kind of educate our listeners today um, about the various different types of things that do happen. You know, one of the things that I get, I'm going to say on a daily basis, is a spam or a fraudulent text message. You know, you kind of, yep. you kind of grinned and <laughs> laugh. Do you get them too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are emails. All yes, the time. I know. So, you know, I'll name off some of the ones that I get them from, and you can add to the list. But Amazon, you know, mm -hmm. they have frozen my account until I click on the link that's in the text message. Or they uh, can't find your house and that needs to be delivered. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have an Amazon coming that day, right? <laughs> right? Or you've not ordered anything from Amazon. Yep. Or, or my dad, who doesn't even have an Amazon account, you know, and he mm -hmm. gets so many Amazon spam messages. It's just like, come on, people. And then FedEx, mm -hmm. UPS, um, Apple. Mm -hmm. I don't get as many Apple as I used to get. But I, I do get those periodically. Um, let's see. What who who else do I get them? Oh, PayPal. Oh yeah. PayPal. Uh, the IRS. I, I can tell you the IRS is never gonna text you, Jeffrey. They're never <laughs> gonna text you. <laughs> if you get one from them, delete uh -huh. and report it as spam. Uh, -huh. uh who else? Um uh, oh, Facebook. I'll get a Go ahead. Facebook. I'll get a phone call, which anymore I don't answer numbers. I don't know mm -hmm. hardly, and, but they'll leave a message saying my loan has been approved and <gasps> I just need to call back to collect the money. And I'm like, yes, no. I get those <laughs> every day. And so tell me this, this one, I do wish that that a banker or somebody, my good friend, Jeff Starkey, I need to mm -hmm. ask him this question. Because this one, I don't understand. There is a gentleman, I kid you not, one day when I was going through my junk spam email box, mm -hmm. inbox, this gentleman, like every hour, was sending me that my loan was approved, okay? And I think it was from Capital, Capital Credit. And my loan was approved for X number of dollars. And it's in my junk box. So I delete it. And then I keep going on down through there. There's another one. There's another one. But each time I'm marking these things as block sender. Mm -hmm. And it's the same email address, the same guy. But every day I'm still getting them. But finally, they're hitting my quarantine now. Uh, my business quarantine mm -hmm. box. So I'm finally not having to hit junk on his every time, but now I'm getting them from another individual, same type of email, but I don't get it. When you mark it as block sender, how are they getting through the block sender? That's what I don't understand. Wow. But you're right. Those emails. Yeah. yeah. My loan has been approved. They're going to give me X amount of dollars. Yep. So let's talk about the links in the text messages. 
number one, we should never click on them. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, you talk about your the Amazon one that you got. What if you did have an Amazon shipment coming that day? You know. Well, the the experts say, you know, anytime you have or you get something and you think it's fraud or you answer the phone and you think it's fraud, hang up or don't click. Obviously, don't click on it and then go pull up the trusted app or the trusted website or, or call your bank branch or, or whatever you need to do. You know, don't respond to that one, but call or look at what you know is legitimate and then follow up on it that way. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing that you need to do in every one of these cases. Um, you know, they'll even put, they possibly may put a phone number in that same text. Don't call that number, call the trusted number that you're talking about. And so let's take that a little bit further because, um, my poor sister, I love my sisters. Um, we even talk about sister moments, um, mm -hmm. and some of the things that they do, they're kind of like blonde moments, but here's, here's a sister moment. And, okay. and I shouldn't call it that anymore because again, the fraudsters, they're so smart. And I was sharing with a friend of mine, some of the things that they do. And, and she was saying that's something that I probably would do, but you know, on the internet, you know how, when you look up something on the web, the first several links, if you will, have the word add mm -hmm. out beside it. Right. Well, so my sister gets hit with a fraudulent situation. And so she's working through that. First of all, I told her never click on a link in an email of something that you're not expecting. Well, she did. She gave her information away. So she's going to contact, this was, this was through, um, this was through Facebook. She was trying to work out an issue on, of a compromise on her Facebook. So she's going to try to call Facebook. So she looks up trying to find a phone number for Facebook. Mm -hmm. So she looks up facebook.com. Well, there's ad out beside there. So she clicks on that. Well, who do you think that phone number went to? A fraudster. Oh no. <laughs> So she calls that number and what does she do? She gives her information out to oh. another fraudster. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so she's compounded her problem. Yeah. And so when she calls me and she tells me, I've got it all taken care of, I've given my information, yada, yada, yada. And I said, Well, where did you, you know, the Facebook number is hard to find. Where did you find that? She said, I just looked it up on the internet and it was right there. And I'm like, uh, no, no. She said, yeah, it's just right there when you, when you click on facebook.com. Right. And I said, send me a picture of what you did. And she sent it to me and I circled ad and I sent it back to her. And I said, you never do that. Sure enough. I think it was $200 that she lost oh, on that no. deal. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Any of these big companies like that, social media companies, they're going to make it hard to find a phone number yes. when they do online stuff. Oh. So I, I told her I could go out there and create an ad for Facebook. I can mm -hmm. create one for Apple. I can create one for Amazon and have those come to me and I can field questions all day long. But people don't know that. I mean, right. some people do, but some people don't. And they prey upon the people who don't. And so if you don't know that, don't ever, ever, ever use the information that's in an ad. It could be a legitimate ad, but I'm telling you, most of the time, it's not going to be a legitimate ad. So scroll down and look for the legitimate, real domain link for whomever it is that you're trying to contact. And that's so a very good point. Yeah. So, you know, late last night, I had an alert come through my phone. Didn't see it till this morning because I was asleep. And it was from Shazam fraud alert. 
And so I immediately swiped and hit delete. It said it was a fraud alert from walmart.com and or from Shazam that a transaction mm -hmm. for $479.45 was you know used at walmart.com. So I immediately swiped, hit delete. Well, I was going to hit delete, but I marked it as spam. Mm -hmm. And a few more messages down, Jeffrey, I had um, my notifications from Encore Bank, who shows me, you know, at the end of every day, what transactions are going to clear and so on and so forth. Well, there's another alert that says um, fraud alert. And it was the same message that I had gotten from Shazam that I had marked as a spam message. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, maybe I ought to contact Shazam and maybe I ought to contact Encore. But before I did, I ran back here to my office. I got onto online banking to mm -hmm. see what happened because I knew, too, that if I got on the phone with Shazam, they're going to ask me about three transactions. Did three transactions clear? Right. And what were those three transactions? And so I thought, I'm going to need to know that information. So I came back here. I saw that pending transaction from Walmart.com. Mm. So I knew that this was legitimate, not fake. Mm -hmm. And so when I when I called to check it all out, um, I was having this conversation with, you know, the, the woman in fraud. And we were just having a discussion about my experience, you know, as a prior mm -hmm. security officer and working with fraud and being in banking and so on and so forth. And I tell her, I often teach people about this stuff. And I, you know, I look through my father's phone every weekend because he saves up all of the alerts and the emails <laughs> that he's gotten because he doesn't want to click on anything. And I'm all the time saying, dad, you do not have an Amazon account. Therefore you can always delete these. And so, um, anyway, she said, can I add to your training? And I said, oh, I would love that. And she said, there's two things that are such hot buttons right now. She said, tell your people that Amazon, Google, Apple, Walmart, Best Buy, all of the big players. Oh, she said Nike. She said, the big players are never going to advertise on Facebook. They're never going to advertise their products on Facebook, especially a really good deal. That's <laughs> she, a very you good know, point. they're not yeah, going to advertise something for $2 and some odd cents. They're not going to do it. And so she said, but you cannot convince people that they're not. She said they mm -hmm. see Best Buy put something out there that's a really good deal and they they click on it. And the next thing you know, they've got all this spam. I mean, all this fraud that has hit their account. And she said, those are predators mm -hmm. that are out to get you know, these customers. And so she yep. said, let them know that so many advertisers out there today are fraud. And she said, I hate it for the ones that are out there really trying to make money. But mm -hmm. she said, they need to know that the big players, the big players are not advertising there. And she said, um, they need to read the reviews you know, look mm -hmm. at the reviews and make sure they've been verified, they're legitimate, and do their due diligence before they make purchases. And I said, that's such, you know, good feedback. I don't buy anything. I don't care if it is even on Walmart.com or um, Abercrombie and Fitch, I don't, whoever it is. Yeah. Best Buy, wherever, I'm reading reviews, both good and bad. I want to know before I make a decision to purchase something. So definitely read the reviews. Yeah. The That's other such a good point. It I've is. I've never even thought about that, that they, they won't advertise on these other platforms. Yeah, they just don't do it. I, I told her, I said, That's a good one because I'm the same way, Jeffrey. I never thought about them not advertising on there either. Yeah. 
Uh-uh. But she said that is that is a huge one today. Yeah. Is people are being scammed by what they think are the big players out right. there. And you made a very good point a while ago when you said Amazon, you know, coming to your home or can't find your home because she said the other big one today is uh, shipping charges with FedEx and UPS. She said Mm -hmm. FedEx is the biggest one, but she said that the predators today are waiting about one week after somebody has either shipped something or ordered something and they're sending communications either in text or emails and saying that they owe shipping either, you know, the, the shipper didn't put enough shipping on it and you owe the difference or when you shipped it out, you didn't pay enough shipping and you owe the shipping. And so people are just trusting that it's FedEx or UPS doing that corresponding and they're clicking on those links to pay that $2 shipping or $1.96 mm-hmm. shipping or whatever. Yeah. She said the, the amounts are really small and people aren't thinking a thing about it yeah. and they're doing it. That's and then very the, creative. It is very creative. And I must be cynical because I'm like, if it's real, they'll send me another two or three. <laughs> you know, I'll pay it when it's past due. <laughs> I'm that same way. <laughs> I'm I that same. Don't trust it. I don't either. That's the way I am with emails. Like if I get something on my business, I'm really bad about it about my business because I'm like, mm. you know, I've been taught the IRS don't send things or, mm-hmm. you know, they don't ask for things. And so if they real if this is really real, I'll get like five. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or One they're or two, gonna, I'm just gonna delete. <laughs> yeah. Or they're gonna tell me that I'm gonna have to pay this really large penalty or I'm gonna end up in jail and then I'll start looking at it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't trust anybody. I really don't. Uh-uh. Um so yeah, I mean but they they are getting extremely creative and yes. So this next one I want to talk about okay, is, is probably one of the best I've heard in a long time. And this is a friend of mine. She going on about her day working. She gets a call and they tell her that it's a gentleman. And he says he's mm-hmm. from the fraud department like Shazam. Mm-hmm from Bank of America and wants to know if she made two transactions. And he tells her the two transactions are from Africa and gives her the dollar amounts of them. And she says, no, I didn't do those transactions. And he said, okay, well, let me do a report, a fraud report Mm -hmm. on those. So he pauses and acts like he's doing this report. Uh And so she says that all seems legit. And so he then says, well, can you tell me the last time you used your card? And she said, yes, last night. And he said, and what was the amount of that? Mm -hmm. And and she said, 70 something dollars. I can't remember the exact amount. Hold on and I'll tell you. So she looks it up. Yep. She tells him $77 and some odd cents for Indian food. Yeah. Which that's a legitimate Verification question. I mean, yeah, the, the bank could ask that kind of question. Right. Wow. But they started off with all of that before verifying who she was. Oh. The that's first ridiculous. questions were, that's what I told her, you know, and so. Um, 
I say that. I think that's what they did. I'd have to go back. I'd have to go back to verify that. But he, they did at some point verify her, mm -hmm. um, some of her information. But what they did, though, was was they did not give her any information whatsoever. They were constantly asking her, what is your address? What is your phone number? What is your account number? Whereas like when I spoke to Shazam this morning, they asked me part of it. And then they gave me part of it and said, is your, you know, apartment number steal whatever mm -hmm. you know so we were sharing back and exactly. forth you know so that i would know that they were who they were the snow like and trust factor they never presented her any of her information whatsoever which i told her should have been a red flag and she yeah. and the more that they talked to her and the more that they were asking her a hundred percent she did get that belly gut feel mm -hmm. And and she, but she got it when they said, "What is your PIN number to your card?" And she said to no, them, no. "Yeah, she said to them what it was." But then she said, "This doesn't feel right." And so they justified why it didn't feel right. They said, "Well, we can't see your PIN number," and so. Oh, goodness. They knew yeah. what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. And so we can't see your PIN number, but they justified to her the reasons why they were asking her, you know, these questions. And I said, look, they they know the banks know way more information than what people give them credit for knowing. Yeah. And so. And while they may not know the PIN number, they can override that. And do what they need to do on the bank side to do what they need to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, she, you know, the kicker was, the kicker was he talked her into, at the end of the conversation, contacting this particular phone number. And it was like asterisk, 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 number, pound. And That's odd. to contact somebody. Well, what that did was it forwarded her cell phone to them, to him. What? Well, once she, yes, once she forwarded her phone during this process, she could not make, I mean, she was able to contact the police, but when the police went to call her back, nothing. She yeah. she couldn't get any calls back. They were all going to them. And so the police even made a visit out to her home because they couldn't get a hold of her after wow. she made the report. And so crazy. it was crazy. She said, I'm telling you what, I learned the biggest lesson through all this. No, she didn't lose a lot of money, did she? She I did mean, not. Thankfully, good. she didn't lose a lot of money because she was able to contact the bank. She just, when it was too late, yeah. she knew she had done wrong when it was too late. Yeah. Because again, they never gave her any information when they asked her for her pen and she gave it to them. And then she said something about this just doesn't feel right. And she made a comment about another card that she used. Mm -hmm. They said, well, what card was that? And she mentioned the card and they said, oh, well, let's see if there's fraud on that card too. And they acted like they were looking it up. Hmm. And and so anyway, <laughs> she said, Tanya, I fell hook, line and sinker. She gave them those card numbers, the pin numbers. She gave them way too much information. But she knew she knew that she had fallen yeah. in right into their hands. And so yeah. 
she then, you know, called the police. She called the bank, shut it all down. And but now they know they know all of her information. She's going to have to change a lot of stuff. I mean, she gave a mother's maiden name, spelled it for them. She gave them everything. And so, you know, I told her, now you've got a concern with identity theft. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's, I mean, you just have to be so careful about clicking on links, answering questions. And I told her a lot of the questions that he asked, number one, if Bank of America Fraud Department called you, they do not have access to other banks. She she knew that. She just had fallen prey to them and- anxieties going yeah. You're like oh my gosh what have they got and you just it's it's hard to to think straight sometimes right with that kind of stuff right you know? yeah she just fell into the fell right into their lap and they had her and yeah. um it could happen to anybody it could happen mm-hmm. to anybody because my sister she really was the same way she said you know they sounded like they were intelligent and i said mm-hmm. they are they're very yeah. intelligent in their field yeah. And that's what these people specialize at. Yeah. They're professionals at it. They are professionals yeah. at it. And it kind of goes, it kind of goes back to, um, I'll say this and I, I want to open it up to you and, and let you provide feedback, but it goes back to that letter that I got, you know, in that email that I mentioned, you know, going mm-hmm. back and even looking at who sent it, who sent the text. I even sometimes get those text messages and they're in a group. The email that I got, it come from a Gmail. I mean, Best Buy, it may have Best Buy's letterhead at the top or their logo, but coming from a Gmail, that's not Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at everything. Is there grammar errors? You know, are things cut and and paste and put in there? Um, Does your bank talk to you the way this person's talking to you? Um, Is the IRS asking you for things that the IRS doesn't have information to, you know, we, we really just have to stop and think who is on the other end of whatever it is that we're looking at and start asking yourself questions Mm -hmm. about what's going on. And, and am I falling prey to something that should not be happening right now? And anytime there's one red flag, there's going to be more red flags and there's nothing wrong with cutting that person off and calling someone back. The no. Calling the real person, like calling the bank, your real bank and saying, I just had a phone call from somebody that said they were from the bank. Did somebody there really call me? Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. No. And you mentioned, you know, even them asking questions like what's your address or whatnot. I've even said, you know what? I've moved recently. I can't, I I don't remember if I've changed my address. So what do you have? Let Mm -hmm. me see what you've got. And -hmm. then I'll tell you if that's the right one, Mm -hmm. you know, just doing something like that even Mm -hmm. um, helps. And then you you mentioned email addresses too. Yes. You know, I learned that, you know, with many years in the bank and I got caught a couple of times with it, unfortunately, (laughs) you know, because they test us. um, Look at, you know, if it's got, you know, best buy dot one, two, three dot gmail.com, you know, or mm-hmm. something like that. If it's got letters or numbers or mm-hmm. just gobbledygook in it, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, that's probably fraud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's or, got me a couple of times. Or even the link that they're sending you to click on. What, what the heck is in that link? Look at the link to see what the link says. Yes. I mean, yeah. But Tanya, you mentioned something earlier. Um, just kind of offhanded, but I wanted to be sure and bring it back up are the alerts from the bank. You know, I think everybody needs to sign up for every single text alert, every yes. email alert. And I would much rather be bombarded with those every day, mm-hmm. knowing that the information's safe than not get any of those mm-hmm. and something happens. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And credit card companies offer it now, you know, everybody mm-hmm. Uh, offers those text and email alerts. Mm -hmm. I agree. I get inundated with notifications from my bank on this transaction just took place, you know, card on file, card not on file, Mm -hmm. um, or whatever that the name of that is. Um, You know, 
I'm inundated with them, but I had rather be inundated than caught off guard. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. All day long and sign up for notifications, get that a hundred percent. I also told her that, you know, I don't, I am not an affiliate or a referral partner whatsoever with LifeLock, but Mm -hmm. I am a believer in LifeLock. We have it. Bill has it. John has it. We, Mm -hmm. we all have that. And I can tell you that, um, we got that when John was a victim of identity theft several years ago. And when somebody runs your social and you know it right then that somebody ran your social, yep. it's, it's a good thing. And if somebody opens an account in your name with a bank, you know it. And, you know, if you yeah. hadn't been to the bank to open an account and somebody does and you know it within a few minutes, you're able to shut that stuff down. And so, um, well, and now too, the credit unions, the three, the three big ones anyway, offer, um, you can lock your social security number down. Mm -hmm. So even if you were trying to do something legitimately, you couldn't do it until you contacted them and had it unlocked, Mm -hmm. which, yeah. And, and you can do that through LifeLock as well. And oh, good, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I like that. Well, so I just bought a new vehicle back in in January and it was kind of funny because when they ran our credit, we um, we got a notice through Mm -hmm. LifeLock. And then I guess when they added it to the credit report, we got another one. Well, the minute I saw that alert pop up. I was like, oh my goodness, it, I'm, I'm on this, you know, got so I, fired up. <laughs> I got fired up because I was like, oh my gosh, somebody just ran my credit and I'm right here working and I didn't do it. And so I sent Bill a text. I either sent him a text or I called him and I said, somebody just ran my credit. And he said, Cal-, he was like, calm down. It was probably the dealership, you know, running mm-hmm. the credit. And I was like, they've already run our credit. It can't be that. He said, I just got the same notice. And so then I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. And so when I called it up, I logged into both mine and his and cleared the notification. And um, that's what it was. They had just posted it to the mm-hmm. credit report, but it was, yeah. you know, it was several days later, but, but at least, you know, yes. you know, at least, yeah, you, at know. least you know. And so, but yeah. You know, the big thing is, is just don't, don't fall prey to, to what those no. people are, you know, trying to do. Well, another type that I wanted to, to bring up too, not to run too long here, but um, the romance scams with like dating apps and stuff from, again, having been in banking for so many years and you talk to people who get scammed out of their money because, Oh, they're in love with so so and so from, (laughs) you know, Alaska and they've never met them before, but oh, they're so in love, you know? And it's like, really? (laughs) I get it. You you can develop a relationship over the phone and talking to people, Mm -hmm. but just don't give them money. Right. (laughs) See them in person first. (laughs) Several times. (laughs) And then don't marry them in a month, you right. know, <laughs> yes. and then all of a sudden, you know, one of them is deceased and buried and somebody else has got the money or, I mean, yes, those things are real. Yes, they are real. So. Especially uh, with all the, the dating apps that are out there now. I've not often, but occasionally hear of somebody that they start talking on an app or something and then, then they're asking for money because they can't get home for the weekend or they're stranded somewhere and need gas money or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't fall for that. Mm-hmm. It's, it is, it's, it's scary. I often, um, you saying that made me think, um, just looking around, um, I had Kinley over the weekend not too long ago and just seeing the number of people who don't have homes right now. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. there's lots of scams right now of people assuming to be homeless, you know, Mm -hmm. and collecting money. 
And so I would just point out people, do you think they're really homeless? Do you think they're really homeless? And there would be some, she would say, Mimi, I think that person's really homeless. Mimi, I don't think that person's really homeless. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, you just never know. You just no, never know. No, you don't. You never know. So, wow. Well, so I really appreciate you coming on and, and helping me share. I get passionate about this stuff because even, even for me, I, I have, I was looking last night on, I, I, I probably shouldn't even say this because somebody may hear this that have sent me a, a Facebook request or a LinkedIn request. I have there's 30 something requests that I have in LinkedIn mm -hmm. right now that I have not accepted. And in Facebook, it's much longer than that, <laughs> but I do due diligence. I probably delete as many requests as I accept, sure. or you know, I may delete more than I accept because yeah. there are so many. You don't know bad ones out there. I'm not talking about bad people. I'm talking about bad accounts right. that are out there. And there are so many that like in Facebook right now, I have the same person account three and four times. And I'm like, did this person get scammed mm -hmm. and they've recreated or is this, for fraudsters trying to perpetrate this person. Mm -hmm. And um, if people's profiles are not either public or they don't post to where there are some things that are public and I can see them and they don't have, if they don't have at least 700 friends, yeah, they're not getting through my ecosystem. No. I'm sorry. I know. I, I seem to get a lot more of those on Instagram than I do Facebook, but yeah, it's like, it's somebody that were, the account's like a week old and they have yes. 200 friends and there's one picture. Yeah. And mm -mm. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. And, and, and so I would say that, you know, probably in ending this is mm -hmm. Facebook fraud, Instagram fraud, LinkedIn fraud, any type of social media is, is just another thing to, to look out for because there are predators there just like um, I do not even answer Instagram messages because it is nothing but filled with perverts well, saying, well, I love your picture. <laughs> Will you connect with me so we can build a relationship? I'm like, delete. No, no. Don't um, even you message just mentioned me. Too with social media and made me think. Um, I was reading an, an article earlier about social media fraud and how a lot of those quizzes that they put out on social media are actually scammers just collecting data, you know, because it's like, what was your, you know, post pictures of what your favorite pet was, you know, and what was their name or mm. it's stuff that that's like, you just think you're doing this innocent game or a get to know you kind of thing on social media when really it's, it could be not all the time, you know, some of it is just innocent fun, but some of it are those scammers that then they've got your data from a security breach and then they link stuff together and mm. it's again, is they're professionals at it. They are. That's that's really good to know, because I actually in my business, I've wanted to do some. Um, content gathering mm -hmm. information through um, Q&A and quiz type. Mm -hmm. uh, questioning to my audiences, and so that may make me second guess doing that or only sending it to a certain group um, right. because, you know, you can tag certain groups through uh, social media platforms, mm -hmm. but ugh, um, yeah, I may have to do some more research into that because I sure do not want to come across as some type of perpetrator, but you know, obviously right. I wouldn't use it for that, but sure. 
But I agree that there are some some strange things out there like that. And I don't participate in those. I do not participate in those. And I do not. And this is another thing I've tried to put out there. Do not copy and paste things. When you read these things and it says now copy and paste this and put it on your wall and ask somebody to copy and paste it. That's just yeah. another way to get yourself um, fraudulently taken advantage of because yep. the fraudsters start that mess. Yep. And so they during can. that copy and paste, it, it is a, um, I can't remember what they call that, but there is a, um, a link of some sort that's yep. embedded into that, that's gathering yep. your information. Well, they could have, um, specific hashtags that then they track those hashtags and go, you know, track everybody who's mm -hmm. reposted it or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So hopefully we've scared the weebie jeebies out of you, <laughs> <laughs> all of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. In a good way. In a good in way. A good way. <laughs> in a good way. That's what Kenley always says. I'll say, Kenley, I'm not trying to scare you, but and I'll tell her something and she'll say, me, me. You just said, I'm not trying to scare you, but you just scared me to death. <laughs> so yeah, I don't mean it that way. We hope that we have educated you and taught you some ways that you can be careful out there in the social media world, as well as the digital world. And if you have not already subscribed to the Influence and Growth Mastery podcast, please do so. And I know that I have failed to introduce myself. I introduced Jeffrey, but I'm Tanya Gossage with Influence and Growth Mastery podcast. And until next week, I have enjoyed being with you, Jeffrey. I've Thank enjoyed, so I have enjoyed having you on. We need to do this more often because yes, I do. know there are a plethora of topics that we can discuss, but thank you so much Definitely. for, for being here with me. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Until next week, everyone have a great week. Bye.